Hello and welcome to blog number 53, me learning to play the Melodeon. It's actually been just about two years since my last blog and that's because I've been busy doing other stuff. Um, I spent most of 2015 recording an album that I was commissioned to write. Um, it's actually a Christmas album for children called uh, Having Fun at Christmas and you can find that uh, online if you're interested. Um, I also um, took up the English concertina pretty seriously uh, and then the Anglo, so I've been teaching myself those instruments as well. Um, but the other week uh, I was contacted by a very nice lady who lives locally to me, said she'd been looking at my um, YouTube videos, me playing the melody, and wondered if I would teach her to play. So I got back to her and I said, well, <clears throat> to be honest, um, I never really taught anyone one-to-one -one on the melody. Um, I've taught thousands of people to play the guitar over the years, uh, so I didn't exactly give myself the big sell. Anyway, she came back and said yes, she'd really like to have lessons with me, so she's had to date five lessons, and uh, I'm really enjoying teaching her. I've also got another uh, guy that I'm teaching to play, so that's an interesting um, project for me, and I'm working very hard once again on playing the Melodeon. The other thing that I've been doing is I've been playing with the Morris side. Uh, my local Morris side is Chelmsford Morris. I started off by playing English concertina with them just while we were rehearsing, but it, it really wasn't sort of working out. Um, and in the end, I ended up uh, playing cigar box guitar. Uh, you may know that I play the diatonically fretted, kind of a dulcimer fretted cigar box guitar. And uh, that's what I've been playing, much to the astonishment of other Morris sides. But it's, it's really worked out well, I've really enjoyed it. I would actually like to play the Melodeon with them as well, and that's another reason why I'm working pretty hard on it. Um, over the course of the last few years, I've bought and sold quite a few boxes like most Melodeon players. Um, I had a very nice Dino Buffetti Binchy box, which is great. It played beautifully, but I didn't particularly like the sound of it. It's a bit brash. So I've been looking at loads of other boxes lately. I've been looking at a Serenolini Lady, which is quite hard to say, which I, I liked, but it's 1,800 pounds, brand new. It's a lot of money for uh, somebody like me. I'm, I'm actually retired now. I've actually stopped teaching um, in school. So, you know, that's a lot of money to dip into the savings for. I also looked at a Castanari Lily. And from my perspective, uh, when I was sitting there playing it in the shop, the, the bass was kind of dry, drowning out the, the treble so that's obviously because it's a single reed instrument. A lot of people have said to me, they don't sound like that to the listener. Well, that's, that's all well and good, but obviously as, as a player, I want to enjoy my playing. And if I can't really hear my treble side against the bass, it's not, not particularly great, is it? But I'm, you know, I'm still mulling those ideas. But another idea I've had is to get Martin White, who's my local uh, Melodian fettler, to have a look at my um, Erica. Here it is. This is the first box that I bought five years ago. And it's done me proud, it's really, really good. So this is it, it's got quite a wet sound. And if you don't know what that means, it means that the reeds are tuned fairly far apart, so they beat. And when I first started playing, I loved that sound, but I'm not so sure now. I think I prefer the sound of melodians now where they are swing tuned, which means that the reeds are not tuned so far apart. So they're a bit drier, if you like. Um, so one option is to have Martin completely retune this, kind of close up the gap. One of the things that Martin specialises in is what he calls Dedic tuning, uh, which was a tuning uh, started off by Ian Dedic. And um, what happens there is that the, the two reeds are tuned either side of concert pitch, not one tuned at concert pitch and the other tuned uh, sharp to it, but these kind of straddle concert pitch. And that way the, the idea is that they are more in tune generally with the chords. Uh, on the left hand side. I have another of my boxes tuned that way and it, it does sound really good. So that's that's one thing he'll do. Um, I might have it changed to a fourth button start. 
If you don't know what that means, well, this is a third button start. This is a D G melodeon, so the third button is G on that row and D on that row, and a fourth button start. Those buttons move down, and the advantage of that is you've got more low notes, and you can have a complete scale of G below this G, uh, cross rowing. So that's an advantage. Less squeaky notes at this end that you're not going to use. So that's an option, but uh, so far I haven't really, you know, hankered after a fourth button start, but lots of people I know absolutely love it. When I bought this, I think the buttons on the right hand side have been limited. Well, I know they have because I've looked underneath uh, the mechanism. There is some red felt, but now it's got the dreaded um, buttons disappearing into the holes. Let me show you that close up. Um, you can see my finger is going into the hole following the button and the problem with that is your fingers do get quite sore after a while playing um, as you play you can feel uh, the rim of the hole it's not very pleasant um, I'll show you my other Erica so this is my other Erica this is a GC and you may be able to see there if I The limiting is working really well there and I can't feel the rim of the, the hole at all. The left hand I'm not particularly happy about either. These are funny old buttons on these Erica's. Um, they're quite sort of wobbly and again they disappear into the holes and you can feel the rim. Okay it's a perfectly playable instrument you know I've, I've been teaching this the last few weeks and it's absolutely fine. But uh, you know, you always hanker after something better, don't you? So I'm hoping to get the left-hand side uh, limited um, as well. Maybe put some felt around the the buttons, or maybe even change them to the mushroom type buttons. Um, I've got a one row, which I believe has got those type of buttons, and I'll show you those. It's these sort of buttons, um, and course they fit into the holes you don't you don't disappear into any holes there this is a completely different type of box of course but I believe they're what's known as the mushroom buttons uh, and I've been told that you can have those type of buttons fitted to um, an Erica the other option of course would be to have the reeds replaced in this uh, red Erica. Now I actually prefer the look of this. This is an older one. My black DG is a, I believe an early 90s and I've been told by Martin that this is a 60s Erica and um, yeah I like the look of this this one a lot better than the black one and of course the right hand buttons are already limited so the idea would be to have the reeds taken out of this I'm not to be bothered about having a GC. I mean you know when I first started I wanted everything you know D, G, G, C, A, D, G, but now, you know, I'd be very, very happy to have a, a, a D, G that's a tuned dryer, limited buttons, and I like the look of this one very much. So I'm going to ask Martin this afternoon if he can put a set of D, G reeds in this um, and uh, tune them. Then I can keep my other Erica and then I'll be able to carry on practicing and teaching, otherwise I'll have to wait or the other option, of course, would be to play the, the DG row of my ADG Hona Compadre, which is going to be quite hard work, but, you know, that, that's the last resort. Or maybe he can lend me something, who knows, we'll, we'll see this afternoon. So this is kind of, this is the before and, the before and after blog. So you can see what I'm looking for, you can see the problems, and then you'll, you'll see uh, when I do another blog, once the work's been done, the difference that it's made. And there's loads of videos of me playing my Black Erica uh, on on uh, YouTube, so you can hear it and see what it what it sounds like. I don't want to go too dry. Um, I looked at a video yesterday where the, the reeds have been really closed up, and I wasn't too happy about that either. So I don't want to go too dry. So you know. Martin said he'll tune a couple of reeds to demonstrate for me this afternoon, which is really kind of him, and I'll be able to sort of tell from that and make a decision. So there we are, That's, uh, that brings us up to date. Um, 
Sorry, it's been a long while. If you've been waiting for uh, blog number 53, it's been a long time coming, isn't it? But hopefully there'll be lots more now. I'm still playing the concertina. Uh, I'm really enjoying uh, playing for the Morris side. It was a, a world that I didn't really know much about. It actually started uh, with my wife Jenny uh, starting to dance with them. She, she really fancied doing that. She's loving it, absolutely loving it. Um, and uh, I'm enjoying playing for the band. It's a big old band for the ladies side. They have a, a big band, several melodians. Uh, we've got a bassoon player, drums, and as I say, me on the cigar box guitar. So that's a lot of fun, makes a pretty impressive sound, and I'm enjoying it. But hopefully I can get good enough um, on the melodian to play the melodian or maybe two or three tunes when we dance out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next blog.